Casey Kraft, hairdresser and co-founder of the Hair Brain Community here with my good friend Julian Pearl and GRL. What's up guys? It's rare that we get to be at the same place at the same time, but today's one of those special days. We're here in sunny Southern California. You can see the sunshine pouring in through the sunroof here in the atrium. And we said, you know what? Let's, uh, let's share some education. So Julian has his fresh little mannequin here. It's gonna teach you a great little lesson about crop layers with a little bit of a twist. Yeah, there we go. So Julian, what are you gonna be teaching us today? Well, I have to say Gerard promised that he would take me to the beach after this. So I promise. He promised. And I'm gonna buy him an ice cream cone. There we go, now I'm gonna do a good haircut. Um, so I'm gonna work a uh, you know, crop shape, short layered haircut. And I'm starting in a little bit of a different way. And it goes to a conversation I had with a hairdresser, you know, over the weekend um, up in Sacramento. I was doing a class there. And, you know, we were talking about different points of starting a haircut. And, you know, sometimes we start in the most fundamental area. Um, other times I like to start where I'm going to see the biggest amount of change quickly. But then also, you know, if you have an area that seems to be a little bit troublesome, it's good to start there because you can choose the right length for that situation yeah, and then like, let that dictate everything. Honestly, else. I, I didn't know exactly what Julian was going to be doing today when I saw him starting like right behind the ear. It's somewhat of an unusual place to start. Yeah. Well, so what's your thinking? Like why start right there? I'm an unusual kind of guy. Oh, yeah, we can all see that. That's pretty obvious. I, yeah, I see this a lot, guys. When we start our layers in the back, we come around and we wipe out this corner too quickly. Or if we start here, we don't build the corner. And a lot of times on the head shape, this is the flattest area, right? So we have width here, we have width at the occipital bone, and we need to build the head shape because if we take it too short at the mastoid area behind the ear, it can just really create an awkward look to the occipital when you look at it from the side or from the front. So by starting here, I can choose a length that works with the head shape much more efficiently, and that's kind of the idea. Um, I, I could have started this shape in the center back, um, as long as you're aware of what you're doing. All right, guys, so if you're just joining us and we see lots of our friends are, of course, we appreciate your support. Lots of love for Julian, who's been sharing incredible education now through HB Live for probably over two years. Yeah, been, yeah. I know you've done literally dozens and dozens of lessons. The idea here is to get up close and personal with a master educator, let him share incredible education, and take your questions. Most importantly, we want to hear your questions here. I'm, I'm manning the, the camera phone here, so if you've got technical questions for Julian or anything about the career of being a great hairdresser, I'm sure he'd love to help yeah. you out with that. Um, let us know where you're watching from. I can see we've got people watching from all over the world. I saw we had Carrot watching from Finland. Uh, Eileen is watching. I know she's back in New Jersey. Ariana uh, Marino is watching. I know we're going to see Ariana tomorrow. At least yeah, Julian is. I will. Yeah, we've got our good buddy Frank Mussolino in the uh, house. Frank, hey, what's Frank. up, Frank? Right on. And of course, Michael Snyder. Always what's watching. up, Wild Rice? Yeah, we're here in Southern California where it's such a beautiful day today that we decided to go outdoors. Yeah. If you hear some airplanes flying overhead, we appreciate that. We apologize for that. But we hope you appreciate the education anyway and love this uh, this beautiful lesson from this very yeah. handsome fellow. Well, it, I mean, it's nice, to, it's nice to get out and cut hair somewhere different. I've uh, been doing it, uh, the classic cutting foundation, like Gerard said, for about two years out of the studio at my house. Um, so now I'm down in Orange County. We're outdoors cutting hair. Um, and, you know, like I said earlier, we're working on a short layered haircut. And, you know, many fad names we call it a crop. Um, I know a lot of people always refer to it as pixie, which is still cool. We wanted to, uh, you know, just get into the technique behind it. So you can see working with a layering shape, following the curvature up. I'm taking my sections on a diagonal, which works really nicely with the head. And again, the, ch the choice of starting behind the ear is so I can really choose a length that complements the head shape in this area where I tend to see a lot of problems happen. So starting there, following it through, I'm on just about my last section here. You can see that it just works through with where I sectioned off the, uh, the top area. And now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to work in through the sides. Are you building any weight at the top or are you rounding all well, the way through? I'm, uh, with this, I'm rounding more so. Now that, again, determines is determined by the head shape. So, if so I it's notice, curving all It's curving right. round and then I'm following it and lifting with the head shape through. Now, if you had a flatter crown area or very protruding occipital, 
once I got on top of the occipital, I would start to elevate down just a little bit to compensate with that. One of the things that I really like about your short layers is playing with positive and negative space, right? So positive space would be where the head, state, head shape protrudes. Negative would be where it recedes. What I need to do is counterbalance that. You know, I love the quote Vidal, you know, he, he said, we learned how to enhance the anatomy. Right. And I think that's working with a balancing act with the head shape, making it look more flattering. I have a question. So yeah. this kind of uh, division section, yeah. division, whatever yeah. you want to call it, yeah. segmenting yeah. it, how important is where you place that, either higher or lower? Oh, I think it makes a big difference, but can you explain a little bit your Yeah, thinking? well, you have to think about the, the weight through the top, and if there's going to be a transition from the length in the area below it to the length on top of it. So let's just say, you know, a couple of just simple scenarios. If the hair was very heavy um, and thick hair, I might take it a little bit higher, which would get it lighter. If I needed to leave more because the hair might be a little bit finer or the head shape, I may take it a little bit lower on the curve, and then that would leave it a little bit longer there. All right, I want to give a couple shout-outs. Yeah. Our buddy Sean Paisan is watching. Great to have you here. Um, Ivan Dudaf over in Croatia. Hey. What's up, Ivan? Great to have you here as well. Uh, Milo Maximovich. Hi, Milo. Another good friend. Hannah Ruth Evans is watching down from awesome, Van Hannah, Michael welcome. in Atlanta. There was one person, and this may be the first time anyone ever said this about you, yeah. Julian. Go on. Michael Paliokos. He says you're a slow haircutter. Oh, my which God. Is actually completely That's not true. That's awesome. Yeah. This guy's probably one of the fastest haircutters I've ever met in my life. I mean, unless you cut hair in like eight minutes. Yeah. But... He cuts pretty fast, Michael. I mean, I, I try to stay everything realistic to a 45, yeah. you know, because that's what we work on in the salon. We work on a 45-minute time frame, you know, so I try to stay realistic to that. But, um, yeah, you know, all right. I don't mind right. being called slow. Yeah. <laughs> so you're moving into the sides yeah. now. Tell so, us you're taking a completely different approach yeah. here. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking more of a horizontal section. Because what that's going to do is the horizontal sectioning is going to complement the roundness that I created in through the back. If I was to come through vertically flat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from a round shape to a flat line, right? So I want the angle to complement. So by working with the roundness in the back, I take the sections horizontal, and then by elevating, I create a more rounded vertical look there. So lots of love coming in. Great comment from Emma Stout. Loves watching these. A uh, great one from Jennifer Coonan, better to be slow and good than fast and mess up, which I think is fantastic. Uh, Carolyn Dolzo, is he going into the flat layers on the side? Uh, yeah, and like I said, you know, it's, it's still, I would say, in the realm of flat layers, but by working a little bit more horizontally, it will have a little bit more curvature on that vertical angle, you know. And guys, it, when you're working with, uh, you know, such a, uh, I don't know what to say, what to call it, you know, um, a small parameter, you know, of what is going to be good or bad. I mean, you know, little things like this make a difference. I could have very easily came through flat, um, but I'm trying to think of the best approach for what I'm trying to achieve. And when you're working within parameters that are so tight, everything matters. Great to have our friend Hope Harris here watching, Hi, and Sandy uh, Kowalski Super. Welcome, Good everyone. In the hair brain community. Now, Julian, every uh, I, we both do this, but I'm traveling around a lot teaching yeah. classes. A lot of people ask me about you, yeah, um, about you know what you're up to, what you're doing. Yeah. So, you know, other than filming these HB Live segments for us and sharing and educating, what's going on in the world of Julian Permagero? Well, Gerard keeps me locked in a closet, so this is actually all he lets me out every once in a while to do one of these. <laughs> no, nah, but um, yeah, a lot of things, man. I uh, work with a few different companies and do education, but primarily education. Um, I work with uh, Davinus quite a bit, and you know, I'm one of the educators for that team. Um, I do my own private education. I also work with a company called Sport Clips, which I help train and work with their artistic team in Texas. And I mean, between the, all those things and then my own private clientele, I, I stay pretty busy. Here's a question coming in from Bobby Labar. Hope I pronounced that right. Yep. Does hair density help you decide how much to elevate? Yeah, and because what will happen is uh, the denser the hair, the more it's going to magnify the angle. You know, so it'll, it'll tend to look a little bit more extreme, especially when you're layering. You know, you can build up weight quite quickly if the hair is dense. So 
the elevation becomes more of a factor in what you're doing. Now you can see with this, I'm cross-checking through and I'm combing from underneath and I'm just making sure these two areas marry together really easily. But I don't want to comb down because now I'm encouraging weight, right? So this is something that I would do, especially on thicker hair, always comb from the bottom to create lightness through the density of hair. Jennifer Coonan is wondering if this haircut would suit different hair textures uh, or just fine straight hair. Nah, I mean, I think you know most haircuts can be suitable for lots of different textures. You just have to make slight adjustments for you know the curl pattern, um, whether there is one or not. You also need to be aware of the density of the hair, like we were just talking about. So, you know, it, it's not something that you know you can say it has to be done exactly the same way. It really needs to be you know, altered to suit the different textures and the different growth patterns. And I think once you start to be able to take an idea and recreate it on different textures, it just gives you a really, you know, a good understanding of what that is. I'm going to spin this around for you, Kelly. Thank you. So now I'm going to work with that other side. All right. So now will this be uh, symmetrical or you'll be doing something different on the other side? Well, I'm going to try to... <laughs> do the same thing. Um, sometimes, you know, balance uh, is better than others, but now nah, I'm going to be working more symmetrical. So we've got uh, Gan Gami watching from India, wondering where we were from. We're here in Southern California today with Julian. Uh, Julian's based here in Southern California, and we've got this beautiful sunny day, so we decided to go outdoors and cut some hair and share some hair with you guys. Yeah. If you have questions about hair cutting or about the industry or anything at all, we'd love to riff on that and give you some answers. I'm Gerard Scarpacy, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community, and I am here to field your questions. We've got my beautiful wife, Kelly O'Connell, behind the camera. Say hi, Kelly. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And Kelly's capturing all the great angles, so keep watching, guys, and see what you learn. Actually, I have a question. Um, sure. What is the difference between a crop and a pixie? I mean... The pixie can mean so many different things, and generally, you know, um, crop, when I was taught it, was referring to cutting hair down to a, about a finger's length. You're cropping it off. A including um, the top, including the front, everything. including yeah. the, the now, fringe area. But I, I wouldn't, um, I, I wouldn't, what you call it, I wouldn't restrict myself to thinking that a pixie or a crop means one thing. I think it puts you in a kind of a feel of what it is that you want the hair to look like and then it's up to you to you know create the uh you know the subtleties that's going to suit the bone structure and the head shape i'm going to jump in on this yeah. one too i think pixie is a really consumer friendly word that most consumers and non-professionals hear and they think short soft feminine haircut where crop is a more kind of a technical word that hairdressers that maybe were trained in precision cutting know. But I think the average consumer, if you say crop to them, it might be a little confusing to them as to what a crop is or what it means. So again, it's just, you know, which way you want to go with it, you know, yeah. in terms of, but here's the thing, there's no right or wrong name for a haircut. Well, I mean, with, with anything, it's, it's also, we want to speak in a language that the clients can understand, you know. So, I mean, if you call it a pixie, that's cool. We could debate on it all day. I mean, is it bangs? Is it fringe? Is, is it, yeah. Where are you in the globe? Dan, yeah. Daniel Smeet says, Pixie sounds young and cute. So again, hey. guys, it's all about who you're talking to. Yeah. You know, and half the battle is being a great, successful hairdresser behind the chair. I still do clients behind the chair and do, do very well with it. But I, half the battle is what you say. Most of the thing. how you say yeah. it. What I say a lot to describe it, I, I'll say head-hugging layers. You know, because I think it, you get a kind of a sense that it it, it hugs the head, it's close to the head, right? And I think that's something also that sounds really appealing, you know, to a client that may want short hair. You know, if you tell them you're going to give them a head-hugging layer, it's like, oh, that sounds so pretty, right? Pixie can be dated to it at the same time. Yeah, it can sound kind of 80s. You know, I always think of, like, Madonna, Papa Don't Preach, when I hear Pixie. It's very like... It's a horrible it's thing a, to be thinking about. Oh, no, Madonna was wonderful. She's a <laughs> style center. Yeah, we can't all be hardcore uh, like you. Yeah. Yeah, all right, yeah. so you're moving on all to right, the sides. All right, so going to the sides, doing the same thing, guys, again. Now, this is from previous cut. You know, I mean, I obviously cut the doll head uh, before this. So now, taking my section, horizontal, I'm lifting up. There's my guideline from the back length that I cut. So my aim was pretty good. 
I match that into the side length. And now from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep taking the sections horizontal and then lift up as I go. There was a question earlier from Carolyn Dolezal yeah. about you know how the sides blend with the back. I mean, yes. is one layering, one's graduation, is there a little disconnection or do they connect completely? No, Can you just review that? It, it definitely connects completely. Um, I think, you know, it's more of a graduated approach because traditionally when we think of horizontal sections, we think of building weight, but I'm using a graduated approach to layer it through, right? So again, the difference, if I was to cut it vertical, I'm going to create a very flat vertical line, a vertical angle, whereas if I cut it more horizontal, my elevation can create a more rounded line. But again, it's a more traditional graduation to the sectioning approach, but the elevation is what makes it different. Bobby's wondering why we're not in your garage today. Yeah. Today, Julian came down to Orange County because we're going to go to the beach when we're done here. There we so go. we're doing this outside in the atrium. We've got some beautiful sunshine coming in. So changing it up a little bit for you. We're in the atrium today. I had to, I had to get, out of the, get out of the garage studio for a minute. So again, now, you see is, the elevation. Uh, is tension important here? And you know, I noticed that when you comb, you really focus on the fine teeth of the comb when you're sectioning the hair. And I, if you're like me and you're out there coaching people, you, you probably see how often people just use the wide side for everything. Yeah, well, so talk a little bit about tension and how it affects what you do. Well, I mean, that's the easiest thing to think about, you know, the, the side of the comb that you use. Um, when I'm talking and I'm teaching a class, you know, Tension is a part of it, but it also, it, it really comes down to how good are you, right? Because if I was to do this with the finer teeth or with the wider teeth, with a looser tension, the difference that I'm going to get is less than an 80% difference, right? It's going to create less than a 16th of an inch of a difference. So unless you're cutting something and you're accurate enough to be cutting within a 16th of an inch, you know, focus on the shape, focus on what you're trying to do. Uh, more so than anything else. But yeah, the comb itself, I mean, we have the wider teeth and then the finer teeth. That's going to give me a little bit more tension. All right, a couple more shout outs. Gino Souza is watching. Appreciate all your support over the years and keep, uh, keep tagging us and showing us your precision work. We love that. Our buddy Ben Crace is watching down from hey, San ben. Diego. Got to come down to visit you guys soon. I miss you and James. Hopefully we'll see you again real soon. We're here today with Julian Perlingiro. We're in the atrium here. Lots of natural light pouring in. And we had a mannequin and a tripod and we said, hey, why don't we do what we do best, which is... Uh, share hair. I was going to say go to the beach, but no. Yeah. Actually, no, what we do best is we educate, we share hair. Uh, so here we are sharing a special episode with Julian, and he's working us through this kind of fitted kind of crop technique. Lots of little lessons involved here in this layering, and he promises us there's going to be a little twist. I think he might take his more shirt off. Yeah, or something. yeah. I was talking yeah. more about the approach to oh, okay. it. Okay. Where I started is more of the twist than anything. And again, guys, you can see combing up when I'm checking this and blending it through, coming up from the bottom to encourage lightness into the shape, right? Whereas if I was to comb down, I'm going to create heaviness. So just, again, when you're working within the parameters of a sixteenth of an inch, little things like that make a big difference. A uh, question that I'm going to grab here coming in from Debbie Ingalls about using good shears when you're working on a mannequin head. Debbie, if you work on a mannequin head that has 100% natural human hair, then go for it. If you're using synthetic hair, which would be a cheaper price, then you definitely don't want to use your good shears. We're working with 100% human hair today. This is a hair art mannequin that Julian uses. We also really use and recommend pivot point mannequins. Those are our absolute favorite. And the hair is 100% human unless otherwise stated. So it's just like cutting regular hair. But if you're using a cheaper mannequin, sometimes people order them um, and it has synthetic hair, then you definitely don't want to use your good shears. All right, moving into the tippy tippy top. Yep, so you noticed I got the guideline and pointed that out right from the back and now I'm taking the angle through to the face. So, you know, the angle that I choose with my uh, fingers is really going to be what controls the length in through the front. So you can see it stands up really nicely. So you can see I just kind of lift it up a little bit, not too much. I don't want to keep it too long through the front. But I easily could have angled it more. So did you say you were connecting with the crown? Connected, or you starting to, you know, it's connected, connected right to the crown. And then are you over directing back to the center or just Tor to the yeah, previous? Towards the center. Okay. You know, in the over direction, 
or the elevation that I comb it towards the center with is really going to be, you know, governed by what's happening with the curvature of the head here. Let me spin that around, right? So if the head's flatter through the parietal ridge, I need to compensate by lifting up a little bit more. So it's going to give me a more fullness through this area. If the head shape has a nice roundness, I can be a little bit more true to coming off of the base. So again, all of these things are um, little subtleties that we have to consider based on, you know, the client and the hair that's in front of us. Okay, shout out from Eileen uh, Weiner. She took a class with you earlier this month, a hands-on class, and it was incredible. Uh, awesome, thank and you. And I've also noticed that Eileen has a little diamond next to her name that says Top Fan. Oh, that's oh, so a new thing. So I guess people who are really supporting us Very cool. get these little diamonds. I also I know, noticed that from Bobby Labar. Th that's in reference to me. Of course, yeah. of course. <laughs> Uh, Jennifer Coonan is asking why synthetic hair ruins your scissor. Uh, synthetic hair is usually made from nylon or plastic, and just imagine cutting plastic bags or something with your scissor. Um, it, it's going to dull and kind of and fray the edge. So that's that's generally why you want to uh, you know not that it's bad to cut synthetic mannequins. You know if that's all you can afford, then go for it. But you don't want to use your best scissors on them. All right. So now here's the blending of the two areas. So you can see the accuracy went through. I just have that little bit of an edge there. So I'm going to round that through. Comb the hair back away from the face. That'll just help me preserve any corner through the front, which you can see right here. All right. So now this area is really important and it's really dependent on what's happening into the front hairline so if i notice that my client male or female has a little bit of a recession or weakness through the front hairline i want to keep more of that corner to fill it in right and i can refine that afterwards if the hair was quite thick and dense through the front well then what i would do is i would just blend that off for this i'm going to keep it on there Right, I'll play with it later and you know, sculpt this through the, uh, the top. Okay, so now work in the second side. Now I already have my guideline. So cutting from the front to the back is okay, but you notice when I did the first side, I chose to cut to connect it to the crown from this point out. But now that I have this angle from crown to forehead, it really, you know, it's fine for me to start in the front because I know the angle keep the same elevation up, find that guideline. I want to be able to see it through the hair really easily and then blend that through. And again, as I get towards the back, I'm going to notice that it does also marry into the crown area. Julian, you know, obviously this is a very precise technique that you're yep. working with here. Do you always cut precisely? Are there some times where you, you know, I'm just wondering yeah. Do you ever work more free form, or yeah. do you really believe it's always about precision? No, I mean, I mean, I, I love uh, more of your abstract shapes and working more freehand. I'm open to using different tools, different approaches. Um, it's just about trying to get the effect that we want to get, you know, for the client. Um, I will say I find that you know working in a salon situation. Precision t um, tends to be what I lean towards most because it is going to grow out a little bit more. Uh, it'll grow out better longer, right? And, you know, I can pinpoint where I place the lengths and weight very easily. So, yeah, meaning that the next time they come in, it's something that you can kind of... I can repeat. reproduce yeah. easily, Sometimes yeah. Sometimes as we get a little more free form or abstract, yeah. it might be a little more open to interpretation each time. Which is cool. Yeah. You know, where, you know, yeah, for me, I'm, I'm pretty free form and abstract. <laughs> and, well, yeah, but here's the thing, man. I was uh, talking to this with my friend Christine in uh, Jersey last Christine week. Zelinsky. Christine Zelinsky. Christine Zelinsky. And we were talking about the difference of tools. I mean, we can cut with scissors. We can cut with clippers. We can cut with a razor. We can cut with thinning shears. And, you know, I was thinking about it. And, like, I'm funny because someone will say something and then eight hours later I'll comment on it because it gave it time to resonate. I guess that's part of being slow. It's part yeah. of being slow. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I came up with a thing. I'm like, taste, not tool, right? Yeah. So taste, not technique. The taste is the most important. Your technique will help govern getting the right shape. The right tool for the right job is important. But out of the three, if you take taste, tool, technique... Taste is by far the most important. Yeah, which we also sometimes call suitability, right? Like exactly. having the eye. Exactly. Yep. 
You know, and if it looks good, it's good, man. You know, it's just one of those things. If you want to do this career, I know both Julian and I are over 30 years of doing hair. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if you want to keep it interesting, you got to really kind of play around and try different things and develop your taste as well. Because yeah. some of the things you might have enjoyed doing 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago, now you look at it completely differently. Yeah. Well, I mean, in developing the taste, I think you, you need to do things that... Uh, you, you need to do things that nurture the eye. You know, you need to look at beautiful things, whether it's hair, whether it's art. You know, it's like if you want to become a great wine taster, drink a lot of good wine, right? So if you want to... And so is that what you're doing when you drink wine? You're trying I'll to become, become a... No, I drink, yeah. ghetto, I drink ghetto stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's like you have to look at beautiful artwork. You have to look at beautiful hair. And you want mentors that do beautiful hair. And, you know, you, you, that affects what, how you see how you see things. Can you have that, please? Sure. Thank you, sir. Gerard was reading my mind to get a little bit of water in the hair. I was a very good assistant. You were. You still are, man. And, I, you know, little known fact that some people might know, Julian was one of the first people that I ever assisted. When I, we worked at Sassoon, Julian was already a stylist, maybe in his first year or so, working in the salon as a stylist at Sassoon when I got hired as an apprentice. He's just, and, he's just letting you know that so that he can refer to me as being older than him. Yeah, just barely, a couple of years, got a couple of years older than me. But, uh, uh, and then he was one of my first teachers, one of the very first hair cutting classes that I, uh, you know, took at Sassoon as an apprentice. We do these, I think, twice a week classes. Yeah. And Julian was the person who was teaching me one length bobs. And I'd never seen anyone cut on the skin before. I would started off as a barber, so I was used to certain things. But if you know the Sassoon technique of putting the scissor right against the neck and pressing down with the back of your hand. And I swore to God, I thought he was going to cut the model's head off. Because I've never <laughs> seen that before in my life. So, oh, funny. Just a little story. Funny the things we remember, yeah. man. Funny the things we remember. Now, all right, so you see, I, I've left it a little bit longer through the center. Or I mean, I'm sorry, through the front. So now I can address this area, you know, based on what I see, based on the shape here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking the sections now from the front, take a little bit of a vertical section here, and I'm going to lift out. Our buddy Ivan is going to send you a nice bottle of wine from Croatia. We, uh, awesome. we have Believe a nice bottle. Believe me, they have Thank great you, wine brother. in Croatia. We yeah. visited and we hung out with Ivan and we really enjoyed it. Well, next time and, you got to bring me, Jay. And then we got to go back to Rod. Yeah. Andrew no, that's one of the places that I, you know, yeah. would it's love to go visit. Split is the area that uh -huh. Ivan and uh, Angela Ursic come from and it's a beautiful part of the world. The land is just as beautiful as the people. Yes. All right, so you see, just now changing that angle and cutting into the forehead, combing it down, right? And by cutting into it, it's going to create a little bit of a softer choppiness to it. You know, and I think, not wrong, but this is also a perfect example. A lot of times when people get to the front, they really rely on doing this a lot. You know, they, they chop through it. But I'm going through first with a very strong, you know, uh, precision technique. And then from the precision technique, if I choose to uh, then go back, I can soften the lines up, I can remove weight, I can create texture. But again, choosing first to do it clean, and you can see the control, how I just have that going around the forehead, following the curvature of the brow into the cheekbone. And that's just by over-directing up just very slightly to create that length through the side. And again, guys, we get to the point now where everything matters when we cut hair. You know, we, we want to be within a sixteenth of an inch of perfection. And that's kind of how I judge, you know, if I'm accurate or if my taste level is good that day. So follow that through. Awesome. Yvonne says we're welcome to come to Croatia anytime. So one of these days we might show up on your doorstep. There we go. You got room for us? Might be sooner than you think, man. We need a lot of good Croatian wine. <laughs> All right. So now you can see the difference. So I haven't cut this side, right? Right. So this here, you know, I cut that through. It just follows the curvature nicely. You know, put a little texture behind it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the same thing through the other side. Again, just lift slightly towards the center, taking that corner of length away.
So you kind of went through your basic shape. Did, yep. did you uh, did you do a lot of cross checking? Do you find that that's something that's still necessary for uh, you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love to cross check, and you know, again, just skimming off the edges. You know, um, always really, really important. I think with everybody's work, um, but also it just it, I think cross checking kind of keeps you honest, man. You know, it's like if you don't cross check your work, how do you judge how good you did it? Yeah. Right, so I think it just really keeps you honest, um, and I never want to be the hairdresser that says everything I do is perfect because that just means I'm a liar or I'm not cross checking. Well, it's also part of refining yeah. because even if you go through once perfectly, going through another angle actually softens, bevels, creates more flow. So even if there's, you know, it's this thing about what we always used to call air cutting. I remember one time when I was teaching years ago in the Sassoon Academy. I had a student, um, and he said, well, why are you make, making believe you're cutting? And I said, I, I'm not making believe I'm cutting. I am literally, if you look at the scissor, there's like dust on here. I am, and that it? dust makes the shape yeah. so much more seamless. Even when you're working this way, you know, when you're working with precision cutting. It's like the amount of hair that I'm cutting off is, you know, a fraction. It's a, it's, it's a 64th of an inch. Whoa. I'm all about measurements today. I see that. Cause, is that because we just had the ratchet set? I was going to say, because we, we were building furniture. <laughs> now, um, I will say this. The hairline is done from the last haircut, so I'm incorporating that you know, into it. Um, if I was to do this uh, you know, from a longer length in the back, I would have had a little bit more overhang, but I would have gone through it again with the tips of the scissor and just create that line, guys. Got a little shout out from our buddy Rick Bennett. It says oh, great nice, education. Rick. Thanks, guys. Great, Rick. Uh, hopefully, see you again soon at a show or something. And uh, Jennifer Coonan, this has always been a dream for her. It's finally coming true to be. She's uh, apprenticing at the Alpha Puff Milano Academy, Very which cool. is great. Congratulations on that. So it looks like you're getting pretty close to the finish yeah, here, Julie. You know, I mean, I'm done. I'm not going to blow dry. We're, you know. We got to get to the beach. We got to get to the beach, but also. Um, you know, it's about to cut, guys. Now, if I was to blow dry, I would probably work with my comb, right? And just keep everything flattened down, right? And then maybe, uh, you know, from there, you know, use a pomade, a little bit of a dry wax, preferably from Davinus. Love you know, Davinus. And get, the, and get the texture in there. But something that kind of pieced the hair together, similar to what the water's doing right now. Um, but again, you know, focusing on the haircut for you guys today. Um, I will say something that I love to always say, and hopefully you agree that you can always style a good haircut, but you have to style a bad one. Awesome. So this should just dry really nicely. So thanks, Julian, yeah, for spending man. time with us today. Thank you all for your support. Again, if you enjoy the education that Julian brings to you, head to our Facebook uh, page itself, click on videos, and you can see, I'm sure he's got very close to 100 videos that we've done over the past two years where you can really have personal mentoring with a great guy. Send him a direct message with your questions and think about bringing him into your salon because he's an incredible in salon educator. I'm George Casey saying peace out for Hairbrain Live, and we'll see you again real soon.